Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the final countdown. It's your guy, MP, and we are live from Gorilla Cross Studios in downtown Las Vegas. Guys, you know what? It's Thursday, as I like to call it. It's Friday Eve here in Las Vegas. As always, it's my guy, Jay Long, kicking it in. What's going on, partner? Man, 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 you would think it's midnight outside. I know. That's crazy. I got here, and I was like, what? I'm supposed to be home by the time the lights come on. I know. I remember what my mama said, and I'm late. I'm in trouble, but yeah. I was with you the entire time. Oh, yeah, that, that so is the excuse. One of us goes down, we're all going down. Man. Two. You know what? It's so funny because I just left a, uh, a function, and it was light when I left. I swear <laughs> for God, the lights were on. And like you said, dude, it's, I think you get you get used to daylight saving time when you don't realize that it's actually almost over. Yeah. You know, no one knows that the longest, you know, most people don't know the longest day of the year is what day? Ben Simmons Day. Thank you very much. That is that day. June 22nd. He said that right answer. And then the next one, the <laughs> shortest day of light is December 22nd, which is just. Uh, look at you know things. things. I know about some solstice. Yeah, look at that. You went to Detroit and you grew up in Detroit. And there you go. You know about the solstice. I know about the solstice. Detroitians are known uh, as a farming folk. Uh, <laughs> and we wear gators. Yeah. Pink oh, pink gators, my Detroit players, and all them <laughs> hooligans. All them hooligans. <laughs> yeah, man. So. You know what? We're in the heart of sports. We're the bowl season's just right around the corner. Playoffs is coming in the NFL. Uh, college basketball and it's in prime time. Number one in college basketball. They've fallen off trees like autumn leaves. <laughs> it's uh, it's coming down out there, man. So uh, yeah. let's move the meter with that thing we do. Our barbershop chop. <laughs> oh yeah, man. People get paid out here, bro. Just getting money. Yeah, I think I know about four or five guys who actually played Major League Baseball, and I believe that they got paid twelve dollars, a food stamp, and ten cans that were had a returnable price of five cent. <laughs> and now guys are just getting—I mean, Steven Strasburg, dude. I, you know, I don't even want to talk about it. You tell that number because it's just so astronomical. Yeah, two hundred and forty-five million dollars. What? $245 million, which uh, was a record for about a day, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, it includes the overall monetary value of uh, the price, uh, the contract that David uh, Price got uh, a while back, you know, which was, it turned out to be a good deal, uh, but Strasburg getting $245 million at age, what is he, 31 now? 30, 31? Yeah. So, uh, you know, adds about seven years plus onto his uh, current contract situation. So, but $245 million, man. My man stayed uh, on the East Coast. He likes it there. They won a championship. But oh my God. the fallout of that is their uh, offensive player of the year, Anthony Rendon, had, uh, had to go somewhere because <laughs> they're – they, they showed last year, they're like, well, we'll pay one person, but we ain't going to pay all y'all. Who do you think we are, the Yankees? Uh, more on them in just a minute. But uh, and then Anthony Rendon goes to, uh, where'd he go, the Angels? The Angels. And finally, Mike Trout has somebody to play with? Yes. Except uh, broken down Albert Pujols and uh, broken down uh, Otani? You know, and, and I look at that. Yeah, they, you know, they uh, missed out on the first one. They wanted Jared Cole, you know, and Cole was talk about his money, where he went with that uh, sack of cash. <laughs> but I, I, I look at that. Is Rendon just another uh, pool host just waiting to happen, man? Is he? Are they getting him in his prime? You know, two hundred and forty-five million that, to, yeah. to sit on that stack of money that Trout's getting to sit on that stack of money that pool house uh, pool holes is getting. Is this really going to be a difference maker, or are we just looking at and you know what? And uh, I can't think of the owner's name right now, the Angels. But when he when he bought the team, you know, he's a Hispanic owner. And we just look at it and go, you know what? We understand you're trying to to push your culture in a city that has a Hispanic culture. So is this really about wins or is this really about filling seats? You know, and that's my biggest question. Yeah, well, you know, Art Marino is, is you know, always loved that city. He's always, you know, he's an older guy. And yes. he wants to win a championship that. He's made some mistakes. He thought, I mean, everyone thought that Albert Pujols was going to keep going the way he was. There was no indication that we, he was and any kind of decline, he just got a huge contract, and then all of a sudden, 
He broke I don't down. know. He, he did the. I don't know. I don't. I have no idea what happened. His body just broke down suddenly. Uh, you know, and this is this is kind of the risk they're taking, and that's the risk you always take with these huge contracts. You're hoping that the you know what they've done carries into the future, and more so, you hear more and more people talk about how uh, you're paying guys for what they've done in the past, not necessarily what they're going to do in the future. And you're hoping what baseball executives are really hoping for, and a lot of these contracts do contain deferred money. Right. They're going to get money down the road, like I think somewhere in the neighborhood of like $15 million on the back end of it's going to be deferred to like, uh, like 11.2 2028, or in, uh, between 2028 and 2030, he's going to be collecting that money. Yeah, like 11 million to 15 million, something like that. But some of that money is going to be deferred. But you're hoping he's, he's going to continue this trend. But he had a monster walk, uh, walk year. He had a monster year. No, he did. And man. there's no other proof that says he's going to have another one other than the fact that he's a good dude and he's a fun player to watch. So, hey, Angels. Yay. It's fun to be an Angels fan. You're always in it in the offseason, man. That's a great thing. Oh, when it comes to free agents, you guys are always in it. You're winners. And then the season starts. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Kind of like know, Mets fans. Ah, go Mets. Hey, Mets should be decent next uh, next season. Sure, and they should you, on paper be decent. Next and then your guy uh, Jared Cole, um, Jesus Garrett. Christ, Garrett. Is it Garrett? Not Jared. Come on, yeah, I don't Risk, care. put some speck on that man's name. Man, Jerry Cole. I'm gonna start calling him <laughs> Jerry Cole. Jerry Cole. <laughs> Jerry Cole. Not to be confused with that 1980s hairstyle Jerry girl, but uh, <laughs> man, nine years was that 345? 324. <laughs> Oh my God, that's just Jesus money. Three twenty-four, is... nine years. He didn't win the uh, the championship this year, but he was smoke. He yeah, was he smoke. Was the... It wasn't because of him. No, it wasn't. I mean, he yeah. showed up. We know your guy, uh, Verlander. He that first year was his year, man. You, that first year, I think Verlander was hungry, and now Cole had been the guy for the last couple seasons, and uh, he got paid for it, and he should yeah. be. You know, but it's just that money that I don't even understand where it comes from. Because if you ask anybody who watches baseball, Quan, you watch? Well, do you watch baseball? No. Yeah. See, there we go. <laughs> Sports guy. Sports guy doesn't even watch baseball. Like, where is this? Who is signing these television deals with the thoughts of people are watching baseball? People don't even like going to games anymore. Wow. It's 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 a weird dynamic to the sport, man. I. Uh, I don't know how they're making it work. You know, it's the ultimate. What is the wizard doing behind the curtain? Yeah. Because do you watch baseball? Uh, only in the playoffs. Yeah. Only in the playoffs. <laughs> but, you know, they do sign these huge television contracts. I mean, the Yankees network is worth, you know, billions by itself. You know, and that's for one team. Then you just had this, the Fox Sports sell-off where they sold all their regional networks. Right. How housed a lot of the, the – uh, TV contracts for regionalized teams and stuff, you know, and attendance is actually up for most teams and it's up across the board and the revenue is up. And so when that happens, I mean, and it's the Yankees, bro. How Steinbrenner wants to win a championship that's his, that's not con uh, connected to his dad in any kind of way. The old guard is gone. A Rod, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Captain America guy, uh, what's his name? Shortstop. Uh, I can't remember his name. Nah. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. There, there you go. go. I was like, I can remember his wife's name, and I couldn't remember his because uh, I read magazines. There uh, you go. But, you know, Derek Jeter's not, not there anymore. I mean, there's no connection anymore uh, to, to his dad. So it's like he wants that championship for himself and for, I mean, for the Yankees, which, oh, no, they haven't won a championship in a decade. <laughs> oh, Whatever no. are we going to do, you know? And so, hey, $324 million for arguably the best pitcher. I mean, the thing he's got on Verlander is that he's, what, nine years younger than oh, yeah. Verlander? So, I mean, he's <laughs> coming into it, but there's that chance, you know. Pitchers often hit 30, 31, 32, and most of them, not the, not the big powerhouses like Verlander, but he's built like Verlander. So, yeah. he might be pitching this great into his 38, 39 season. And that would be the ultimate win for the Yankees. And hopefully they have a couple of championships. At least that's what their front office is thinking. Man, I always said if I had a son, that my son would either play baseball mm -hmm. so he can get that baseball money or mm -hmm. be a kicker in the NFL. Some of the easiest money out there, man. Just some of the easiest. You know, it's long-term money. 
I mean, hell, uh, my man over in, uh, ah, crap, the Colts, the Colts kicker. Uh, yeah. uh, Jesus, I see, I got Ben beat. Simmons, Adam Vinatieri. Ben Simmons, Adam, Adam Vinatieri. Vinatieri. Like Adam Why can't team. we remember names? Uh, tequila. Uh, but, you, go, yeah. you know, but with that said, he's 94. <laughs> Yeah. He's 94, and he's still not. He's, he's missing the, shots. He's still collecting checks. He's still 2.5. Ooh, ooh, he's only collected. I think 2. I saw 5. somewhere uh, uh, Gary Anderson is looking to make a comeback. Why would he? Was he was kicking the balls, uh, you know, a couple of days, uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said, "I'm accurate from 10 feet." Hey, <laughs> Which, that's, that's all 10 teams need these days. Hey, like, seeing that some way <laughs> these, these guys are kicking is better than a lot of these asses yeah. out here. Yeah. Speaking of asses, mm. God dang! Come on, man, Patriots! What the hell, dude? What the hell? You cheating again? What the hell, man? I, I, I... How, how do you really feel about it, Mike? How do you feel? Wear about gloves. It? Wear a ski mask. I don't know, but do something different than what you are doing. You keep getting busted. I don't know. I'll give you something. Say something really racist. But... I, I was gonna say <laughs> they're they're really good at it, but they're they're re- repeat offenders when it comes to this cheating thing. Man. Oh my! God. We accidentally videoed a sideline for eight minutes. No one got a cousin out there. And then of course Belichick stuff? does this thing where he's angry at the world because they're asking him questions. You know, being a coach of the most high profile football team there is. Like uh, a, you know, I can't believe like a you're asking me getting caught cheating. You know, just, oh, girl, what you talking about? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, <laughs> Always with the microwave on. <laughs> you know, girl, let me get out of my face with that. But you know what, man? The great yeah. Rick Flair said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah. So, I mean, every, and, and it's one of those things, right? So it's like, kind of like what's going on in baseball right now with my beloved Astros. How dare you call us cheaters? Uh, you know, every team does it. But it's the blatant at, you, at how you did it and how you went about it and the fact that you continue to do it. You're not even trying to hide your cheating at this point. Come on, man. At least hide it like we do. You know, that's yeah. what other executives are doing. At least hide it like we do, you know. But, you know, it's the uh, Patriots. and yeah. But you know what they do? They approach it like rich white men. <laughs> they go, ah, eh, no one Well, let our lawyers handle this. Yeah, we're, we won't. And we're, they, and, oh, 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 oh. and uh. The commissioner loves them, and uh, him, out. Him, him and Kraft have a very long... Uh, I love Jones. I love... Yeah, they got to love Jones. Yeah, I love Jones. They got to love Jones. Belichick is a love baby. Yeah, and, okay. uh, So, you know, man, I mean, nothing's come down yet, but we'll, we'll see. We will see. We will see. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Got to love Jones. I got to love... Y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. too young. Y'all yeah. know about that? Yeah, y'all, y'all know about that? Cheech yeah. and Chong. Oh, I know. He yeah. shook his head over there. So, uh... Last one, last note. Them Lakers. Wait, what did I say? Them mm. Lakers, boy. Mm. Uh, wait, who? 22 and 3? Magic's in the air. Yeah. Wait, oh, how did I say that? Oh, you saw what I just did there. Magic is in the air. 22 and 3. 13 consecutive wins on the road. Did I say 13? Yes, I did. It ain't an unlucky number because they won. So that means it's lucky. Yeah. But you know one thing I do understand? Them wheels is going to fall off. Sooner or later, because that is a team that is two injuries away from being the Cleveland Cavaliers. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I uh, appreciate everything they're doing. Those are my guys. They're my people. 100 grand. And it's largely due to the fact that LeBron has, has changed his game up, you know, uh-huh. so significantly, man. He leads the league in assists with 10.8 a game. Yeah. You know, he's dishing the ball. He's creating opportunities for Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis, for his part, is making the most of those opportunities. And yeah, he's got, a, you know, a couple of huge games already, a 50-point game. The man is attacking the rim like nobody's business. He's snatching rebounds. You know, and he's crossing up dudes like Iverson, man. It's, it's crazy what Anthony Davis is doing. And, uh, you know, uh, both of those guys, Anthony Davis and, and LeBron, are in the top ten. And, and average points per game right now, you know, and that's that's a pretty formidable uh, uh, duo right there. When you when they play defense the way these guys, Anthony Davis leading the league in, in shots blocked with uh, you know almost three a game, and you know I mean they're playing on both sides uh, of the court, man. And it's when you have that <laughs> like the Lakers do, and then their bench. That's not even to their bench. Their bench is contributing, man. Right. They got guys in double figures all the way down their bench, man. It's insane what's going on in La La Land right now. I mean, the Clippers aren't a terrible team. No, by no But look at the Lakers and you go, oh, 
man, that is a team. They look right now, at least a quarter of the way through the NBA season, the Lakers look like a team of destiny right uh, now. And uh, yeah, I hate throwing that around because that's what no, people have said about the Nats this year, but it was true. The Nats were a team of destiny. The Lakers look like a team of destiny right now. I think they will be. <sighs> I think hurts, they will be. Hurts my bitter, cold nah, heart. Don't hate. Don't hate. hate. It's bad hate. Bad. Hey, guys. <laughs> In an injury, in an accident, car, slip and fall, work, whatever the case may be, there's only one people, only one people, only one person to call, <laughs> and that is Mossberg Injury Lawyers. From accidents to injuries, workers' comp, and even wrongful death, Mossberg Injury Lawyers are the number one legal team in Nevada. Give them a call today, 702-222-4555. Let them represent you. The number again, 702-222-4555. When we come back, East, West, West, East. I don't know. Who, who are the All-Stars right now in the NBA? Let's talk about it a little bit. It's the final countdown. <laughs> Jeremy, Mark. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the final countdown, baby. Oh, yeah. We just, Mark. Yeah, we just, yeah, yeah, we just doing it right over here, man. We, okay. We still got it. <laughs> that is okay. That is okay. Yeah. Welcome a couple back. minutes. The, the famous guy we're always talking about here. Always good, Mark. Always good. Hey, extra. grab the headphones. You might as well just jump in. Yeah, now, just, man. just jump in, man. Yeah, just, just be involved in the show. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have fun, man. We're talking about the first quarter NBA All Stars for the East and the West right now. Um, and Mark is joining us because in, in just a few minutes we're gonna be talking about this <laughs> insurance fraud thing that's going down here. Where that's just horrible, man. Guys are gonna see prison time. Maybe I don't know. We're gonna talk to the expert about it. But before we get to that, let's talk some. East West All Stars, and I am the is this like Biggie most, Smalls and I'm the most underdressed no. guy here right now. Yeah, well, I got I on just plaid. That. I just, He's got a got nice plaid. Looking, you got on plaid. He looked like he just robbed someplace over here, and it's all black. And you know, he has a, a scully. Yeah. He has a scully somewhere. <laughs> he, in my know, trunk. The, <laughs> see. Well, look, hey, if you got a problem, we got a lawyer here. You know, me. we're good. Get you out. There we go. So yeah, so the NBA. Full swing. Everyone's looking good. We just talked about LeBron. We just took the, uh, talked about AD. Obviously, those have to be two front runners as far as the West is concerned. And then we look at it, and the uh, it's it's different this year. You know, last year I think we had the Golden State Five, who are always in contention of being in the All Star game. Yeah. And this season, we look at it, and uh, other people are able to just roll in and have. Make some noise, I guess, would be the best. I know one. you're happy about that. You're oh, hater. man, come Golden on. State ah, Golden State, come on, dude. Where are all those fans right now? Golden State, where are you? Call me. Wait, which, which camera? You know, let me talk to a camera. Hit us up. Let me know where your team's going to be because we didn't know about you before they started winning a couple games, and we sure ain't going to know about Haters. you now. That's Haters. right. Oh, wait, Quan's one of those people. Wow, uh, he, he was quiet over there. Haters, Ooh. Man. Ooh. All right. So we got AD. Okay. We have LeBron. Who else are we looking at out of the West? Uh, you know what? I made I made a list for each. Oh, okay. Uh, and I and I have AD yes. and I have LeBron on there. Also, I have James Harden. Okay. Usual suspect. Uh, Usual suspect. Thirty-six points a game uh, right now. Thirty-eight. Thirty. Oh wow. Full well, eight points above the next gentleman. Wow. Uh, and then I also have Luca, your boy, Luca. Don't you? Not a movie in the seventies. Luca. Luca. Yeah. No, that was Lucas. Oh, that was a sad movie. He uh, dies in the he end. He dies. I remember that now. Spoil that I'm movie crying. for anyone out I'm there. I'm crying right now. Because they're going to go back to Netflix and watch that movie. Go watch Lucas if you want a good cry. You just lay on the couch going, I did my best. That and Brian's song. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's song. Uh, so I have Luca in the West. And you know what? I had a that, that fifth spot was a kind of a toss up for me. I have Devin Booker. I have Dame Lillard uh, penciled in there. But both of those, uh, you know, the, the Suns. I uh, have the number eight seed, Dame Lillard. The Trailblazers can't seem to figure it out right now. So I had to fill it with Kawhi Leonard because at least they got a win in record. Kawhi is down from what we are used to from Kawhi, but I got to give it to the overall team. And you know what? He makes his team better. Kawhi Leonard for that fifth spot. You you look like you disagree, sir. No, 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 no. I'm just sitting here just thinking about Kawhi, and I was thinking of, you know, he's quietly making noise right now, you know, doing all those kind of things marketing people do. But uh, <laughs> I, I watched the game last night, 
And thinking about when they drafted Kawhi, he was an 11 point, maybe five rebound kind of kid. Sure. And to see what he is right now, the moves and the physicality that he brings to each and every game. No, there. If he's not in the list, it's, it, it would have to be a garbage list. So no, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, Westbrook, you know he's he's robbing right now, so I can go with that one. Like you said, Devin Booker, uh, the team they were hot coming out the gate, but they've kind of you know uh, the Suns have kind of just tuppered down at this point. So mm-hmm. uh, no, I look no, I'd have to concur with that one. You want to put Dame Lillard in there because of his rap albums? That's uh, you know you know he's spitting bars. Yeah, you know when someone's like spitting it. bars, uh, you might have to give him some I love. I'm not mad at him. No, I'm just saying. but his team sucks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and they got a legitimate se- – we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, who do you got in the East? In the East, of course, Giannis. Okay, of course. Giannis uh, and Kimba Walker, Joel Embiid. The process. The process. Uh, and then Trey Young right now is having a first uh, first quarter that's really exciting for uh, the representing ATL. And then, yeah, as much as I – as much as uh, as cheesy as I think the guy is, Jimmy Butler. You say he's uh, cheesy. My, Why is he cheesy? Where does that even they, come from? They, he's just cheesy. Because he has a bad haircut? Yeah. That's all of it, man. You know, because of what he said after the game? Because that was pretty That was pretty dope. He was like, man, I'm a, I, he's like, I'm a mother. I'm a mother. I was like, yeah, you did hit that shot. And the fact that he, uh, Trey Young was talking trash in the game the other day when it was down by 17. I knew you were going to. And then all of a sudden, the game's done. Really? He, he did yell that a yeah. minute too early. <laughs> too early. And they ended up losing. Again, he's young, his second year. Uh, so I'll give him that spec. But for what they thought Trey Young, they knew Trey Young could score. No, they did. They, they knew that, but they didn't think he would be able to score at the pace he's scoring in the NBA. And he's doing that. And he's made a, the Atlanta Hawks an exciting team, a team on the rise. And so I get to give it to that. But Jimmy Butler's. Holding it together down in Miami, man. The heat. Who saw that working like that? Yeah, man. That's that's what I'm saying. He's in there. I give I give my man his due. Well, you know what? With Jimmy Butler, when you just look at the whole Miami Heat team, you, you didn't know how it was going to work. You were losing pieces, and they haven't been formidable in years since Wade lost. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, they have a winning record, and you just want to go, is it because it's the East? Or are these guys actually playing great ball? And then if you go down the list of teams that are playing horribly, you know, you look at the Detroit Pistons, you look at the Cavaliers, uh, basically kind of look at the Hawks as well. You know, these teams aren't looking. uh, Another surprising team out there that is doing better than I thought they would is the Raptors. You know, although they lost last night to the Clippers and Kawhi, Mm -hmm. those guys are actually playing some great ball. And Siakam has stepped in to kind of fill those shoes of Kawhi. You know, he's attacking the rim now. So, uh, no, I think... I think that's a good 10, bro. I, I think when I look at this, I'm not mad about it. Uh, it's still early. You know, obviously, as we get into the end of this month, beginning of January, we'll see how teams are coming back around when you start playing a little bit of everybody in the league. Right. But I like it, man. I think it. I this think is when it starts one. getting interesting, though, man. We start heading toward Christmas time, Christmas time games, the All-Star game. All I love stuff. Christmas, man. And it's when guys, this when teams usually start separating themselves and players start separating themselves, too. Thanksgiving football. Or Christmas basketball. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Me, I gotta go football. Okay. Or okay. and that's just taste. I, I like football more than I like basketball. No, and then I like that. See, yeah. I, I like the basketball. Yeah. Because they actually think about the matchups. You know, they want to give us the most exciting games that they can on Christmas. Mm-hmm. And you know, with football. Yeah, every year we get the same teams on Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. It's your terrible team. It's my terrible team. How do we even get in there? (laughs) Who did we pay off in the twenties? That's all I want to. Can I please? Can the Cowboys please not play on Thanksgiving? Please, can we just go away somewhere? I need another team to take the pressure off of of us. us. Because when we're the only team on TV, it's like ooh. It's a glaring moment here. Yeah, that everyone, we're everyone in garbage. the world is going to fall asleep to the Lions getting their butts kicked. You know what's so or crazy? Or the Cowboys blowing a lead. Detroit, were, they were a top power 10 team in week five of, of this season. People are like, oh, my God. The Lions. Week oh, five. my God. Week five. That might as well be the preseason. What are you talking about? You're living on that, huh? Oh, no, no, I'm hey, not. Five weeks not. before that, you guys were 0-0. Zero zero. Y'all were 500. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's only because you're wearing the hat. 
That's all it is. Hey, dude, ridiculous it's the spirit. If you don't have this spirit right now, I don't know what's going on with you. Christmas. Yeah, I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm not going to Festivus. All those things. Yeah, that's next week. Festivus oh, yeah. is the next week. And it's a gonna, hat. We're going to have a darn good show. It's a that's hat. It. It we're going to air some grievances for Festivus. 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 <laughs> My God, Jesus Christ! We just, just we just lost it right there. Yeah, we okay. just lost it right there. What a good. So those are our five. Those are our five that yep. we're looking at. Uh, like I said, I agree with everything you look and got some more. Yeah, hell, I think I'm more surprised right now what's going on in the college ranks than the NBA. But those the NBA. Does anybody want to be a top team in college? No. Does anybody want to be a top team? No. Top oh, teams oh. keep getting knocked off left and right. Michigan gets knocked off. Louisville. Anyone? Anyone want to get knocked off? Did Maryland lose? I mean, that terrible Turpin team. I, I wasn't going to say anything. I oh, oh, oh we got Marcus. Bro. He finally said <laughs> <laughs> He lives. Uh, Big Ten's tough on the road. Big, Ten Big Ten's tough. tough on the road. That sounds like a country song. <laughs> <laughs> Play it backwards. Yeah, that's it. But, uh, no, you know, you look at that. You look at what's going on right now. Like I said Michigan went down. Maryland went down. Louisville went down. I think they all went down on the same day or at least 24 hours. And because uh, we were watching Louisville when they uh, lost, and then we saw on the other screen when Maryland went down, and of course, you know, had to reach out to my man and you know, there's condolences, and you know, let him know I understand <laughs> that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Michigan fan. It happens so, to us all the time. So does that make uh, Ohio State the new number one next week? The only uh, unbeaten, what nine and zero? No, nine and zero. Or does Duke just jump uh, everybody? There you go. That's Duke what goes happens. Back to number see, one. I, was, I was like, you know what's going to happen. All of a sudden, miraculously, Duke will be uh, little sisters of the poor. And they're like, no, no, we had a big win. We had a big win that made a lot of difference. We, <laughs> we destroyed some, Old Dominion. It, it got us we back on track. East-West Tech. <laughs> Our five NBA players somehow scored 110 points against this team. 12, 12 assists apiece. Mm-hmm. And they made it work. Yeah. But, uh, no, nah, man, it's uh, – I think whatever's happening in sports, parity is across the board. Just across the board, everything, everybody's beating everyone. Any good team can beat another good team. Uh, teams who have five seniors, as we know, in the last what, five to ten years, are probably a better team than any team that can bring five freshmen in if they're just not powerhouse freshmen. So, uh, no, I, I, mm-hmm. it can go down, brother. Yeah. It can hurt, and it will hurt. It will hurt for the rest of the season. I'm looking at teams getting into the play, uh, you know, as you just said, Ohio State. Once they start coming back around, they get into the rest of the the mix with uh, uh, the Big Ten. It'll be a difference. It'll be a big difference. Put your money on that. Put your Christmas hat on that. That's what I say. That's what I say. All right, let's do this. Wear a Christmas hat. Go ahead and take another break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we're going to have some fun with a little say what? The final countdown. Broadcasting live from downtown Las Vegas, you're tuned in to Gorilla Cross Radio. This is your guy, Dre Bailey. Thank you, man, Goose Thomas. Tune in to Let the Ball Bounce on Gorilla Cross Radio. Every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Coast time. And every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time. Your guy, Dre Bailey. Thank you, man, Goose Thomas. And if you're scared, you better go to church. a stacked car to UFC 245 on Saturday, December 14th. Welterweight King Kamaru Usman defends his title against Colby Covington. Featherweight champion Max Holloway looks to end Alexander Volkanovsky's 17-fight win streak. And double champ Amanda Nunes puts her bantamweight belt on the line against Jermaine Durandamy. December 14th, only on ESPN+. Plus. Cards subject to change. Yo, you tuned in to Gorilla Cross Radio. Guys, if you've been in an accident, come on. We've been talking about this. You know what it is. It's the guys over at Mossberg Injury Lawyers. Give them a call. Accidents, injuries, workers' comp. They just won the best of award. Uh, even wrongful death. The phone number, 702-222-4555. Let them represent you. That phone number again, 702 222 Five, five, five. So, man, uh, 
it never amazes me some of the things that are going on in the, in the sporting world that make me go, say what? But we got some doozies for you guys. So let's do a little say what. Say what? Ah, this one hurts me. This first one makes me want to cry, but it's okay. In the win last night against Michigan, an Illinois player accidentally smashed the ref in the head during his celebration. Let's take a look. Watch it again. Fired up, and he swings. <laughs> and a blow to Lewis Garrison, oh. the under-the-basket official. That man's out. That should have been like a five-shot penalty. Wow. That should have been a five-shot penalty. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. A you, UFC shot, too, man. And you know it hurt because he didn't even see it coming. It's one thing when you're anticipating something coming at you. Oh. But when you just get smacked with just pure elation. You just got smacked. <laughs> yeah, you just got, you just got smacked. Sorry. Yeah, and the kid just like ah. So like, I'm a, you know, Dakimbi would have wagged his finger. Ah, no, did my house. Now here's my question to you: Workman's count? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, Workman. He's like, man, I've been dizzy ever since that one. He game. didn't return to the game, and you know he had to. You know, who, who knows, man? He might have a concussion. And all of that, can, uh, can you, is that a collective bargaining thing? No, actually, with the referees, they're just employees. They have an employer, natural relationship there. They can make a claim. Really? Oh, Absolutely. He's out. Now, the work comp system isn't exactly easy to navigate through, especially here in Nevada. But No way. Whoa, <laughs> what? Whoa. That's, a, that's exactly what they would say there. Oh, you came back in the game. You looked fine. Uh, oh, man. Did they, did Get they, back to work. Did they give the three taps on his leg? You know, uh, how many? How many? Three. <laughs> <laughs> three. Four. Nice. So you're good. Bitch. You're good. You knew it was three. Sorry, oh, sir. Man. Concussions are not rateable. <laughs> that's, that, that's what I go with. <laughs> they are not rateable. Would you um, take that case, Mark? No. No. <laughs> Cannot win that one. <laughs> deep pockets. Got got to have some bigger injuries. Yeah. Well, I mean, they got to have deeper pockets too. The NBA can't be no punk or the NCAA. You know how they roll. I think they're like the gangsters of college. Mm. You know, they will manipulate until they you figure you're gonna die. They're like, yeah. He has four more breaths left. Let's go ahead and give it. Let's go ahead and let him know we may not give this to him. He may stroke out. And then, so I'd let you take this next one. All right. Uh, the Patriots signed a trick shot kicker named Josh Gable to their practice squad. Now, Josh uh, never went to college for kicking. Uh, he did spend a little bit of time on some uh, indoor football team, I believe, a couple of different teams or whatever. But they signed him to the practice squad because of his ability to do things like this. Go ahead and roll that video. I'm not sure if there's any sound on it, but. Does it have movement? Oh, it's got movement. So he spins the ball out on the ground and from about 50 yards away, Nails that pole. That's like, like straight on. Patriots would just move the goalpost for him. Yeah, and here's a <laughs> 70 yard kick, also aiming for that pole. Nails the pole from 70 yards when aided, but that, still. That was take yards. 63. See, he understands <laughs> how this. He took that right out of my mouth, man. They they never show the failures. <laughs> yeah. So this guy's on their practice squad now. They've been having kicker trouble, just like a lot of teams in the league. They've been having kicker trouble. There was a lot more on this uh, highlight reel, but I, I, I went to the actual highlights. So, but the you have your kids be a kicker? <laughs> I mean, it's, what the hell happened to kickers in the NFL? Play baseball or be a kicker? Yeah, play baseball or be a kicker. That's, that's the only a, thing. That's a high stress job, though. I mean, you got one job, but everyone's watching you, and, it, and oftentimes, if you miss, it means your team loses. It, basically, the basis of a movie. Is about one kick in the laces. Laces out. Laces out. Laces out. That was Ace Ventura. <laughs> yes. Yes, for you guys, check it. Classic football movie. Classic, classic fo football classic movie. Classic football movie, exactly. All your kids should watch it. <laughs> laces out. Laces out, Dan. Uh, that's all. Get one job. As a holder, <laughs> you have one job. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it did not work out for that one. But, no, dude, that's great. Can you? Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. We'll move on to the next one. 
Uh, no, actually, we have one more before we get there. Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden, which, I, how did I miss the boat, man? I know I'm a man of a certain age. Mm. But being a shoey, is it a shoey? A person who buys shoes? I don't know. What are they called? Just A uh, person? <laughs> we all buy shoes. No, dude. But do you have, <laughs> in have a quote, 1,100 pairs a sne- of sneakers? Okay, sneakerhead. There you go. A sneakerhead. There we go. We needed the guy, the Maryland guy. Well, he's an attorney. You know, he, he has to do that kind of. So we had to buy a storage unit. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. What the hell? I went. I saw a pair of sneakers the other day in a commercial, and they had the you know man who likes Heineken. They had a Heineken logo. Mm. Twenty two hundred dollars. Twenty two hundred. And I'm, I'm like, I and then you don't even wear them. I am so confused. Yeah. Kanye shoes are fifteen hundred dollars. The Yeezys, what? Yeah, man. And there's uh, you know huge conventions where Wait, guys go. And, yeah, there's conventions where guys go, and I mean you you're buying and selling shoes. It's actually a, an incredible. I think there's a documentary on Netflix about it. These shoe conventions where people go and spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars on shoes. You know, and people collect only with the most ultra rare. You know, basketball shoes and all, you know, all this other stuff. It's crazy, man. But for Joe Hayden, the the cornerback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, to have 1,100 pairs of shoes. And this is actually down from a high of, uh, he said, about 1,600 pairs of shoes. Let me just do the math on that. That just sounds like a bad investment. You know, (laughs) If you put a hundred dollars against everything, well, it's shoes. like baseball cards or anything else, man. I mean, you definitely really? can't wear these shoes. Really? Like I mean, no one's going to give me anything for the shoes I got on now, even though they are K Swiss and they are sweet, but they are dirty and they are kind of gross. So you know, I mean, no one's going to give me At anything a, for that. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, one hundred sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> no, no, and that's the that's the maybe bottom line. That's the maybe bottom line. We're talking about a quarter million dollars worth of shoes. And it goes down, man. Sure does. It goes down like that. Oh, man. I'll let you take this one, man. Oh, you, you know what? I'd, I'd love this one when I look this one up. Uh, who thought golf would not bring us any excitement? Hey, <laughs> I did. Until we ran into Tommy, and you got to love the name, Two Gloves Ganey. He was arrested in a major prostitu- uh, prostitution sting in Florida. And you're going to love this, people. The name of the sting? Operation Santa's Naughty List. <laughs> Where... <laughs> <laughs> now, is that a is that Tommy's picture? That's, yeah, that's his mugshot. A, that's his mugshot. He just now, looks like he did something wrong. Are you are you telling me, Mike? Okay, are you telling me that this is the face of a man who would pay for sexual favors? Are now, you kidding me? Not only will he pay for it, he told the <laughs> officer that he was in town, so if it went down okay, he would come back for some more. <laughs> So not only did he set himself up once, oh he's like, I'm going to repeat him. offender. I saw it. It was on TMZ. <laughs> they got the tape. They already released the tape of it. Yeah, man. he's just sitting there with his legs crossed. Now, like- what's, okay, now, what's the difference? Uh, let me ask Mark here. What's the difference between, I mean, they they got this guy here. Entrapment. And they get, <laughs> it's not entrapment. <laughs> but so they have this guy, and then they just go ahead and release the tape. Now, how come we never saw that Robert Kraft? Wonder Probably why that because is. Because he paid a lot of money to suppress <laughs> that. <laughs> and judges were suppressing it and everything Kept else. So they, they couldn't suppress that tape fast enough. But this guy ain't even fresh in the in the jail. He ain't even processed yet. And they already got his mug <laughs> shot and everything released. Oh my Probably god. Probably someone went to Robert Kraft and said, How much is it worth for this tape not to get out? And then also people do that. He people. said, Oh, I only have three million dollars in cash on me. That's all my pocket change. My woman coinage. You telling me two gloves? A man whose name is Two Gloves. Two gloves. That's it. It looks like that dapper gentleman. Oh my God, that's the funniest. What thing. is the world coming to? Yeah, you know his wife is standing by his side right down uh, right now, but they all do. They all do until you know they get home and they get hit in the head with a golf club. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they, then they get hit that in the golf club and everything comes unraveled. Operation Santa's naughty list. Uh, just say no, fellas. <laughs> say no. There's a reason that you went, girl, I think you're the prettiest guy I've never seen on this corner. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a pretty girl like you here. <laughs> yeah. mm. always, she she didn't look like a cop, did she? Scabby-kneed Lisa. She just needs scabby-kneed Lisa and faux-tooth Jenny.
but how it's you. If I ask you if you're an officer, you have to tell me, right? You're right. Who, who started that line? <laughs> who started that line? Movies? Did movies start that? <laughs> Probably. Oh, my Wait, God. Wait, that's not true? That's, that's not true? No. That's not true? Really? Not true. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I, I got to start rethinking some life choices. Okay. Oh, my God. And then finally, and this is the thing that I don't I, I guess we're hating. I'm hating. I know I'm hating. It's kind of the basis of this show. Uh, <laughs> NBA's Jared Culver's older brother, you can already tell we're hating because we're preferencing like this, scored 100 points in a college game. It was an NAIA division game. Check this one out, folks. It's Wayland Baptist versus Southwestern Adventist. Yeah. East West Tech. Directional schools. We talked about directional schools. Wayland Baptist. This could have been this could have been a church league. So, <laughs> so my question to you, does this count? Does this hundred points count? He did it. He's good. He got hell, he was on TMZ. I had never been on TMZ. But he scored a hundred points. Well you get, will if you get a name like two gloves and then you uh pay sixty dollars to an yeah. undercover officer. Oh my god. TMZ. Yeah. You know what? I'm not gonna hate on him. A hundred points in a game is a hundred points in a game. You see, he took Even 60, if it's a if it's a rec league, sixty shots. Yeah, that's what James Harden does on any points. given night. James Harden does. They it. won by sixty points. Hey, my man, everything was dropping for him. He said that the night before he everything. had a vision. <laughs> like, was or that just the coach telling you to shoot a lot? I don't know if that's a vision. The coach says, shoot "You're a the lot. only dude on here." <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a vision. He Ooh. was surrounded by four guys who looked like me. It was like, <laughs> yeah, you you just chunk it up, bro. Whatever. Like we're one and eleven. Just chunk it up. Oh, give my them a God. show. But like I said, the way that it's preference, it's NBA Jared Culver's older brother. Yeah. <laughs> but his name is so his older brother. Yeah, oh, it, wait. It's his older brother. It's his older. It's brother. his older brother. For some reason, I I, no. I read younger. Brother. No, it's the way they wrote that. Oh, TMZ okay. has issues sometimes. You oh, know, they his, need oh, his older brother. Yeah, it's his older brother. It might get him a, a G League tryout. Okay. I might get him a G League tryout. Okay, I'll say that Maybe again. Maybe he's got a good uh, good stroke, you know, whatever. I'll say that again. Good release. Okay. You know? Yeah. I don't know. That's it. Did he play for Wayland or Southwestern? <laughs> Did he play for the Baptist or the Adventist? He played for the Baptist. What is an Adventist? I don't know. Yeah, I, know, right? I know that they store seven days of food at their house at all times. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Mark's that making up. Good. You're I, making up stuff now. I know. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> sell kids. That, is, that is not true. That is that true? That's true. They store se- That's why? True. What are they? Seven day Adventist. Whoa, I've heard that term before. It could it's be real. a month long food. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe no, I've heard the seven, seven days. days. Those are, aren't those just survivalists or apocalyptic people who preppers? I don't. Yeah, doomsday preppers. The doomsday preppers. Which I've been talking about Adventist, a lot. I don't know what that means. Uh, if you are watching this and you're an Adventist, I'm sorry. Please call I'm us. not trying to insult your yeah, food you storage. Yeah. I just, you know. Ah, God. <laughs> All right. Damn it. Do they, do they watch basketball? Apparently not if you're getting 100 points scored on you. We're going to take last break. And we come back, we'll do a little legal zone and what? Clinton Portis may be going to prison. Yeah, yeah. probably. And maybe a quick night here nice. Yeah. That too. And welcome back to the final countdown. Ladies, gentlemen, come on, we talked about this. It's the holiday season. People drive recklessly out here. The one thing you have to do is make sure that you're getting taken care of. The law firm you want to call, no other than Mossberg Injury Lawyers. From accidents to injury, workers' comp, and even wrongful death, Mossberg Injury Lawyers are the number one legal team in Nevada. Give them a call today, 702-222-4555. Again, let them represent you. The number 702-222-4555. It's this guy right here in the great suit. That's it, Mr. Marcus Berg. So, guys, Christmas is right around the corner. The one thing that uh, we wanted to do was just find out who has been naughty and who's been nice this year as far as sports is concerned. And uh, we've asked Jeremy to select two people who've been naughty, two people who've been nice. And I'm going to go ahead with my two picks for, for naughty. Go ahead. And my first one, and Lord knows, it's Adrian Broner. That's all. Yeah, Adrian Broner. Just stop. Stop harassing people. Stop having bad interviews. And more importantly, just stop boxing. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know the last time he's actually been won against somebody who has been uh, formidable. 
I mean, he talks more trash than a little bit, and all he's doing is just riding on Floyd Mayweather's coattail. Dude, I'm not calling you garbage because you're a grown-ass man, but, yeah, you've not been good this year. And the next one, I think we can all agree he's been on the naughty list for the last five years, Vontez Perfect. And I spelled his name wrong, both of them. It was the, <laughs> the fact that Spellcheck actually knew the spelling of both of his names was hilarious to me. I mean, this has to be like, like Spellcheck knows the name of Vontez Perfect. But it like, always changes my word to duck. That's weird. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, I mean, I've never said duck this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Well, this is rock throwing day. Duck that. <laughs> this man, the last hit he just put on someone, probably one of the most uh, egregious hits, but we just look at the past and he just keeps on. Santa is not bringing you anything but Charco Vontez. I'm just letting you know, bro, right. get your act together. Yeah. Now, my two uh, picks for nice, and he was on the naughty list for a while, but he's been a good guy and he's come back. With a vengeance, that's my guy, Tiger Woods. Tiger put in some good work. All he's doing is try to win, win, win. I wish I'd have that queued up right now. And the next one, you know, you can't hate on him. It's Mr. Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> you, know, you, you gotta love you that. You gotta get up there for that laugh alone, huh? You got it right there. <laughs> I don't even know where you're sitting at. Like. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, those are my people on my list, man. Good looking there, bro. Uh, Who you got? That should replace Santa's ho ho ho. That should, that should be Santa's new lap, right there. Uh, naughty list, Antonio Brown, because he's been a clown all season long now, all year. Uh, he's got three teams that hate his guts. How, and one day he's apologizing, and then the next day he's going in on everyone again. He might be bipolar. He might be a seven day Adventist. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do during the week, but Antonio Brown is number one. Andy Ruiz, former heavyweight champion, Andy Ruiz is my naughty guy. Uh, second place there because you had a great opportunity. You won a classic fight, and then you go and you eat the entire buffet and then some. You show up to the title fight, 18 pounds overweight, and then you look slow and lethargic, and then you wait to the very last 10 seconds to say, hey, let's, let's box. Come on, dude. What a clown. Uh, and then on my nice list, I have... Uh, Simone Biles, who nice. became the most decorated uh, gymnast of all time, and uh, I think she's engaged now or something. Uh, you know, and she's so she's having an incredible year. And then also, uh, Peter uh, Peter Freights, the the guy uh, who started the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge oh, wait, movement, who died just uh, a little while ago at 34 years old. But he was, a, he was a college baseball player, and uh, so nice. there you go. That's my. Wow. Not a nice list. Look at you. Your list was garbage. I know. Because that hat. What the hell? Like, I'm, I'm, putting you some, on the, I'm putting you on I the naughty you list. people I thought you would take, and you did take AB, but then all of a sudden you just went and got all hearty on me yeah, and stuff. Cool. What the? Come on. I'm a good man. man do we need to start a fun go fund me? What the I'm a, I'm hell? A, dude. Seven day Adventist. Seven day Adventist. We have hearts. All right. So as we always say, man, people do some garbage things in sports, and we know that they do. We watch it. We hear it. But all of a sudden... Now people are doing stuff that I don't even understand why they've been doing it. They've been out of sports for years. Now they're taking money on the back end. And we're going to talk about it in the legal zone with our guy, Marcus Berg. See, now we got to make you talk. He's just sitting over here looking cool with his $300 ties. Now we're going to put you on some topical <laughs> stuff, my brother. Some topical. So uh, NFL players, they're out of the league. They have some injuries. And they go to get... Uh, machines, repairs, therapy, and then their false claims? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it, it's a little bigger than that. It, it looks like a little ring started by some former Washington Redskins players, unfortunately. A uh, ring. <laughs> it's a ring. Those Redskins players. <laughs> and I, I haven't uh, read whether Portis was one of the ringleaders, but they've said McCune was one of the ringleaders, and I don't know who the other one was, but I know Clinton Portis was involved. But what was happening was these players were getting receipts, uh, fake receipts, and submitting them to the health insurance or the uh, their NFL had a plan with about $800 million in it. And I think Cigna was the insurance company that was heading up the plan. And they were submitting these receipts to the plan, getting reimbursed. And lo and behold, it was working. They were taking the money and they weren't buying the medical equipment. Of course, they had these receipts for it. I, I don't think the receipts were 
I'm going to go purchase this equipment. I think the receipts were, it's been paid for. I need to be reimbursed. But they weren't purchasing the, the equipment either way, and they decided, okay, I'm pocketing this money. It's, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a time. Let me see if my friends want to get in on this. They would call up their former NFL player friends who qualified Garbage. and say, hey, I can get you ten, twenty thousand $20,000. All you got to do is give me your information, give me your Social Security number. We'll make the claim for you. We'll take a couple thousand dollars off the top and give you the rest. And, you know, I think they were doing it uh, hundreds of times over and to the tune of a three point some million dollars and uh, it left a nice paper trail, left some uh, recorded calls on the trail. We're talking health care fraud, wire fraud, uh, wow. uh, potential RICO claims, which is the racketeering act. Right, right. Uh, I mean, this is this is federal prison time. These guys are looking at. I don't see a way out. They're not old. You know, by, you know, you're looking at numbers, what, 40, maybe, I think, yeah. Portis, you know, it's maybe. Most of them. Yeah. yeah. All about opportunity. I know Portis was employed. He was doing some broadcasting work for the Redskins, so oh, I man. think it was just an easy out. Hey, let's get some free money. This is working. But it, what's most sad about it is they're taking from the fund that's for injured NFL players. Right. That's, that's garbage. That's horrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, you wonder, like, so did they talk to Felicity Huffman and Laughlin? Or, you know, what the – that's just right up there, you know, taken away from people who need this. And, you know, the, cause, because, you know, we have these players that are playing in the 50s, 60s, 70s who had nothing for life insurance. They weren't getting any money. And I'm assuming this is the same fund that these guys go to when they have pains, something that the uh, Players Association has worked hard to get for them, correct? Yeah, I mean, this fund didn't exist years ago. And, I mean, we're talking about guys who played a long time ago getting pensions of $2,400 a month. I mean, yeah. They need the money. Yeah. So how did this come about? Was it just that all of a sudden, the, the you know, and I'm, I'm sure this happens where red flags went up and all of a sudden they look and say, wow, these guys sure have a lot of submissions. Is that what kind of happened? It, or? it had to have been that. They were just making too many submissions personally, and that's probably why they started branching out and getting other players involved because they realized this is going to be a red flag if we're taking so much. But I don't think that there were a lot of light bulbs that went off in these guys' heads. I think they were just looking at it like, wow, this worked. Let's do it again, and not kind of thinking to the end. Right. Somebody's going to see that we're making hundreds of thousands of dollars of claims each, and that's not going to add up. They just saw that it worked, kept doing it. I mean, <laughs> if – if they're smart, they at some point purchase that medical equipment and can show, hey, look, I've got that equipment. When yeah. somebody comes to inspect, hey, there, yeah, it's in my house. Yeah, it's there. Hey, just buy one. It's in the closet, but yeah. it's there. If just they're smart. One. How long uh, do you think this is going to take? you think it'll be a fast and easy process? Well, I guess it all depends on who's ratting each other out. Who's going to be cutting deals? Who's flipping? I would rat you guys out in a second. I I suppose that the authorities already have everything they need on these guys, and they've already done their investigations, and it's just a matter of you guys want to make this easy or you want to make it hard. Well, I mean, isn't the process with something like this, you kind of have to go in on them hard? Because, yeah, it's like, hey, we got to prove a point. You know, you are our first examples, and we're going to make examples. You're going to be learning today, boy. You're going to learn today. <laughs> We've got a 90% chance of convicting you. Do you want 12 years or 8 years? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. We'll give you a deal if you just say guilty. Yeah. We'll give you 8. Yeah. We'll get those so you and Do a, your time and get out. You might get out early for good uh, behavior or something like that. I'd only serve four of that eight. They Maybe, go, I don't know. Lori I watch Loughlin, too many movies. Felicity Huffman. Well, that's college admission. Yeah, Th- but these I'm are, just these are This is ripping off, you know, in the, in the millions. That's, oh, my gosh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's just And, and the, 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 the list of players, 10 former players, and some of these names, I mean, we talked about Clinton Portis, but Carlos Rogers, uh, Robert McCune, Joe Horn, John Eubanks, Tara McVanover, uh, See Andrews Brown, James Butler, Frederick Bennett, Corel Buckhalter, uh, Etrick Pruitt, uh, and then Rish Caldwell and Joe Horn are also facing uh, conspiracy 
to commit health care fraud. Where did Check Rogers go team. after the Redskins? Did he go to the Lions? Was he ever on the Lions? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. <laughs> he I blame that. him. All he of him. Him. Played for the 49ers, too. He played for the 49ers. I was laying low Quan. on that one. He's a good player. He's a good player. Quite despair. Yeah. I, I think the fact that a lot of these guys don't have any prior criminal history is going to help them out. But how much time do you think these guys are really going to get? Honestly, I, I'd say I'd say years. I'd say, you know, on average, probably two years. Maybe well, if two they to pay the money years. back and all that. Well, that stuff. that's another consideration. If they can pay that money back, that'll go a long way for sure. Yeah. Do some community service. And a lot of these guys, like you said, that most of them probably don't have anything serious on their records. Maybe, you know, possession charges on a couple of these guys, I think. But other than that, nothing else, man. But but if we're talking about millions of dollars, I don't know that they have that money to pay. And back. how many times they did it? <laughs> how yeah. many times did you go back to the well? So you knowingly participated in this. Knowingly. It wasn't just a bad, you know, bad night. And you were like, oh, let me go get some money real quick. And how did they present it to the other guys? Did they say, hey, man, I got a, I got a little deal that makes you some money. Don't worry. It's all right. on the up and up. Right. And, you know, maybe some of the guys that are involved are innocent of it. They just said, okay, it's my option to get this equipment or take the money. Okay. I mean, the, the smarter thing to do would have been to get the equipment and then sell the equipment. At least then you got the equipment and it's your yeah. property. You can choose what you do with it. You have a better argument there. I didn't need but it anymore. I'm not consulting anyone. Mark is Burke consulting. We're, say, we're setting it up right now. Burke <laughs> consulting. I get a kickback. Wait, that's illegal, Whoa. right? Anyway, <laughs> it's all under Mike's name. Don't worry about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's all set up with this information. And, Mr. Berg, as always, where can we find you? Mossberg Injury Lawyers, 702-222-4555. Man, we have to have you in the studio more often. Appreciate you having me. Moss These are new digs. Yeah. Coming soon. Coming soon. Smells like paint. I told you that last <laughs> week. It smells, like it smells like paint up in here. Get high. The legal high. It's a legal, legal high. Legal it's the legal high. high. The legal Ooh, upon legal. Legal high. Legal Ooh. upon legal. Yeah, I'll well, take care of your work comp claim when uh, that There happens. you go. That's it. <laughs> When these paint fumes get I'm you. I'm blind. <laughs> I'm blind, Mike. You've been blind. I can't see. Okay. I, it's the same thing, Mike. But uh, ah, another show. These things go by too damn fast. Yep. They really do. They really do. So, guys, make sure you join in. It's every week, every Thursday right here, 5 to 6 p.m., Final Countdown. And brought to you by Mossberg Injury Lawyers right here from the lovely compound of Gorilla Cross Studios, our guy, Quan J. Long, MP. Sitting in, Mr. Marcus Berg, and we will. Oh, shoot. See you next week. Peace.